Dear children, welcome to the grammar class. Are you happy, my dear children? Do you know that you are happy? How will you show others that you are happy? I ask so many questions now. Can you answer? If you are happy and you know it, kindly do the following. Shall we do now? Yes. Now I am going to sing your jingles. First, I will sing. You just listen to it. And then you just sing along with me. I will show the jingles lines on the screen. Can you do it? Yes, very good. That's a spirit. Shall we start? Shall we sing a jingle now? The lines goes like this. If you're happy and you know it, clap your hands. If you're happy and you know it, clap your hands. If you're happy and you know it, and you really want to show it, if you're happy and you know it, clap your hands. Okay? So this is the first four lines. Shall I repeat again? Yes, let's do from the beginning. Get ready. If you're happy and you know it, clap your hands. If you're happy and you know it, clap your hands. If you're happy and you know it, if you really want to show it, if you're happy and you know it, clap your hands. Now the second stanza, let's go with click of fingers. Are you ready? Yes, we'll start. If you're happy and you know it, click your fingers. If you're happy and you know it, click your fingers. If you're happy and you know it, and you really want to show it, if you're happy and you know it, click your fingers. Okay, so second thing, click your fingers. First one, clap your hands. Now we are getting into the third stanza. So in this third stanza, we are going to shout, Hooray! Will you do it? Come on, shout it, Hooray! Yes, that's right. Now the third stanza, if you're happy and you know it, shout hooray, hooray. If you're happy and you know it, shout hooray, hooray. If you're happy and you know it, and you really want to show it, if you're happy and you know it, shout hooray, hooray. Okay, so first stanza, we clapped our hands. The second thing, we clicked our fingers. And third one, we shouted hooray. Okay, now we are going to do all the three together. Shall we do it? Will you do? Are you ready? I am always ready. What about you? Yes, let's start. If you are happy and you know you do all three. Hooray! If you are happy and you know you do all three. Hooray! If you are happy and you know it and you really want to show it. If you are happy and you know you do all three. Hooray! Very good! Superb! You, are, you did a wonderful job. So in all the lines of the stanza, what is the first word? Yes, it is if. So in this class, we are going to see about if condition or if class. Conditional classes are used to speculate about what could happen, what might have happened and what we wish to happen. So these three things we have to keep in your mind. In English, most sentences using the conditional class by using the word if. Let's see the definition of if conditional class at first. Conditional classes, conditional sentences are also known as conditional classes or if classes. They are used to express that the action in the main class can only take place. I repeat, the action in the main class can only take place if a certain condition is fulfilled. So, when the certain condition is fulfilled, then only the action will take place. So, keep these two things in your mind. One is certain condition and second one, the action. A conditional sentence is composed of two parts. The first part is condition part and second one its result. Look at the screen here. If you read well, you will get good marks. 
we are having two parts in a sentence. The first part, if you read well, is a condition. So this is the condition. And what about the result? If you read well, what will happen? Yes, exactly, you will get good marks. So condition and followed by result. So two things, that is two parts in the if conditional sentence. The two parts of if class can be interchanged. That is, either it may be condition plus result or result plus condition. The order can be changed. So it is not a fixed rule that condition will have to come first followed by the result. We can interchange it at any time without affect the meaning. So the meaning will not get changed if we interchange these two parts. There are three types of if classes. Type 1, just look at the screen, simple present plus simple future. In type 2, simple past plus would plus v1, that is verb 1. Type 3 is past perfect tense plus would plus have plus v3. So we will see these things in detail with many more examples. Are you ready? Yes. First conditional class that is type 1. It is possible and also very likely that the condition will be fulfilled. Note the two words possible and second word very likely. So these two things you must understand very clearly. So, the possibility of the action is very likely. So, it has more chances for the actions to be happened. So, it is given such a way that it is possible and very likely that the condition will be fulfilled. And let's see about the structure now. If plus the first part, that is the if clause, here we have to use simple present tense and in the main class we have to use simple future tense there and what is the usage of it do you know it we already saw that is it is possible and very likely and now we will see about its usage that is if you wish to talk about the possibility in the present or future so two things you have to keep in your mind to talk about the possibilities in the present or in the future. So, we can say the situation is real because it is likely to be happened. So, it is a real situation. Let's go with some examples now. First one, see the image. If I wake up late, I will miss the school bus. So, here, what is the condition? If I wake up late. This is the condition. So if the condition is not fulfilled, then what will be the result? I will miss the school bus. So when the condition is fulfilled, it will give the result. So the sentence is given like this. If I wake up late, I will miss the school bus. Now look at this example. Here, if it rains, I will stay at home. If it rains, I will stay at home. Normally, if it rains, we won't come out. So, we will stay safely at home. So, that is given here. The condition which is given is if it's rain. If it's not rains, we can go out. But the condition is given, if it rains, I will stay at home. Now, the second conditional class that is type 2. It is possible but very unlikely that the condition will be fulfilled. So here just note the underlined word. So I have underlined two words here. The first word is possible. What about the second one? Unlikely that is in very unlikely it is given such. Okay. But Earlier in type 1, we saw about it is possible, but it is likely that condition will be fulfilled. But here, unlikely. That is, the chances 
is not that much when comparing with the type 1. Let us see with the structure now. If plus simple past in if class, here we are having simple past as in the verb form. Then what will be in the result section? Here we have to use would plus v1. It is clearly shown in the image which you are seeing now on the screen. And the usage, when we have to use this type 2. Here this second conditional class that is type 2 is to be used in imaginary situations either in the present or in the future. In type 1 it is a real situation but here it is imaginary situation. So in situation we can say it is unreal. Real situation is happened in type 1 here unreal situation in type 2. So simple past plus would plus verb 1 that is a v1. What is that v1? Do you know what is mean by v1? That is the three forms of verb. Okay, I think you know very well about these things. v1, v2 and v3. v1 is simple present form. That is the present form of the verb is v1. What about v2? It is the past form of the verb and we are having v3. Is it future? No, exactly right. It is not future. It is not present, past and future. It is present form and v2 is the past form and v3 is past participle. Okay? Just have this thing in the mind. Do not go with future. It is past participle. Here we are using would plus v1 that is present form of the verb. So this is about second condition class type 2. Now it is the time to go with some examples. Shall we see now? Look at the image now. So there is a beautiful car in this picture. I think it is a very luxury car, is it? I think it is a luxurious car, is it? Yes. So go with the sentence now. If I won the cash price, I would buy a new car. Let me say again. If I won the cash price, I would buy a new car. So what is the condition? If I won the cash price and what about the result? I would buy a new car. It is unreal condition because the possibility is very likely here mentioned in this sentence. So let us go with the another example, example number 2. Now you are watching a beautiful aeroplane with many clouds there. Is it? Do you like? Yes, I like aeroplane very much. Let us go with the example now. If he won the flight, he would visit all places. Okay, here, what is the condition? If he won the flight. But I am not sure that he won the flight already. So it is here, unreal condition. So if he won the flight, he would visit all the places. That is all the places in the world. So this condition is also somewhat related to the imaginary condition. That is unreal condition. Okay. So the type 1 and type 2, you may have some bit confusion. So let us see what is the actual difference between type 1 and type 2. Are you ready now? Yes. Let us see about differences between first conditional and second conditional classes. The first point. I like to share, it is not about difference of time. It is, we are not mentioning about differences in time when we are talking about the differences between first conditional clause and the second conditional clause. Because both structure can prefer to either in the present or in the future. But the change, we have to note this particular point that the second conditional class simply suggests that situation is impossible or imaginary. So two things, either it may be impossible one or it may be imaginary one. So only we are using here very unlikely, that is unreal condition 
for second conditional class. So, this is the major difference between first conditional class and the second conditional class. Hope you are clear about these two things. Let us compare with the example for better understanding. Okay. See the screen now. If I win the first prize, I will be perfectly happy. Let me repeat again. If I win the first prize, I will be perfectly happy. This sentence is said by someone who has good chances of winning. So, he is very confident about his winning. So, he can say in a confident manner that if I win the first prize, I will be perfectly happy. Now, look at the second sentence. If I won the first prize, I would be perfectly happy. Let me repeat again. If I won the first prize, I would be perfectly happy. The second sentence, it seems that it is said by someone who has no chances or less chances of winning. That is the confidence level is not that much high. The possibilities also is very unlikely. So, here second conditional class are used to make a request or in a polite way also. This is another point you have to keep in your mind. The second condition class that is nothing but type 2, it can be used when you wish to make a request or in a polite form. Now it is a time to see the third condition class that is type 3. Look at the screen carefully now. It is impossible, note the word impossible here. It is impossible that the condition will be fulfilled because it refers to the past. Two words are underlined. Okay, what are the words? Can you read? Yes, exactly right. So, the first word is impossible and second word is the past. As this particular action refers to the past, we can say this action won't be possible that is impossible okay so let's go with the structure now if plus present perfect tense here what we have to use present perfect what is the pattern for present perfect there will be a subject and then have or has plus v3 what is v3 i said already do you remember it exactly right V3 is nothing but past participle. So, here if plus present perfect in the if that is in condition path and in the result section we have to use would plus have plus V3. Once again we are having V3 that is a past participle. But in the condition side we have to use would plus have plus V3. What is the usage of it? It is completely an imaginary situation which refers to the past. Previously in type 1 and type 2, we saw that these two things it can be used either in the present or in the future. But here in type 3, it entirely refers to the past. So, the situation is to be contrary to reality. So, it, it never happens. So, it is just contrary to the reality. So, these all these things that is structure and usage and situation you can see in detail on the screen now. Now, it is a time to see some examples for type 3. I am ready. What about you? Yes, let us see. If I had won the gold medal, I would have been happy. So, here the two parts are there that is a condition and second one it is a result. First thing if I had won the gold medal. So, here the particular person is conveying the information that he did not get the gold medal by chance if it was happened that is if I had won the gold medal and what is the result that time I would have been happy but now I am not happy because I did not want gold medal. So, I am not happy now 
but I can visualize imaginarily that if I had won the gold medal, I would have been happy. Shall we see one more example for this? Yes. Look at the screen now. What is this? Yes. Yes, it's the invitation. Now let's go with the sentence. If I had found her address, I would have sent her an invitation. Here we are having two parts as usual. The first part, just note the first part in red. If I had found her address. So far, I didn't find her address yet. So, I am saying here, if I had found her address, I would have sent her an invitation. Did I send her an invitation now? No, I didn't send. So, this is the two condition that is uh, unreal and is contrary to reality is a completely imaginary situation. So, this is example number two. The first part, if I had found her address and the second part is I would have sent her an invitation. Note here the second part, I plus would plus have plus sent is given. It's not send, is sent. That is send, sent, sent. That is a past participle form of the verb send is sent. So we are using here, I would have sent her an invitation. Now, I think you are very clear about these three conditional classes because we have seen these all the three with two two examples. Now, let us go with the next one. Are you ready? Yes. Dear children, now let us compare all the three types of classes together now. Shall we do now? Look at the screen now. Type 1, type 2, type 3 are given. Is it? So, we are having if class as a column and main class as a another column. Here, let us see the first one, type 1. Here, see the example first. If I study, I will pass the exam. Here, if I study, the tense which the class is given here is in simple present tense. And come to the main class now, I will pass the exam. Here, will plus infinitive is given. Earlier, we saw above that the same thing as will plus v1, that is nothing but verb 1, that is present form of the verb. Here, it can be represented as infinitive also. Type 2, simple past plus would plus infinitive, that is would plus v1. Let us see the example now. If I studied, I would pass the exam. So, the if class is mentioned here is if I studied and the main class is mentioned as I would pass the exam. Now, type 3, past perfect plus would plus have plus v3, that is nothing but past participle form. Let us see the example now. If I had studied, I would have passed the exam. So, if I had studied is the if class and the main class in this sentence is I would have passed the exam, okay. So, I think you are very clear about all the three types of if conditional classes. Now, let us go to the exercise part, okay. Will you do? Look at the screen now. Complete the conditional sentences. Decide whether to use type 1 or type 2 or type 3. So, I will give 15 seconds time. This image will be shown to you for 15 seconds. The timer will be there. You just find out the answer and then I will reveal the answer for all the three questions which is displayed on the screen. Will you do? Are you ready now? Yes, your time starts. I believe that you are ready with your answers. Shall we check it now? Yes. Question number one. If I had time, I dash within the bracket go is given shopping with you. What is the answer? So, we have to use 
type 1 or type 2 or type 3. Here, what is the answer? Yes, you are right. If I had time, I would go shopping with you. So, don't think that as had is given there, don't think as some past perfect form like that. Had is nothing but that is the past form of the verb have. So, the answer must be in past, that is simple past plus v1, that is infinitive. So, the answer is would go. Second question. If you dash within bracket, the verb is given as speak English, you will get along with them perfectly. What is the answer? Now, look at the main class first. Here in the main class, it is given you will get along. Okay. Will get it is given. That is a will plus infinity form. That is will plus v1. So, what should be the answer? Exactly. Which type it belongs to? Type 1. Very good. So, it belongs to type 1. So, what is the answer? Here we have to use the simple present form. Is it? That is type 1, simple present form. There we have to use will plus infinitive. That is will plus v1. Earlier we have discussed everything very clearly. So, the answer is if you speak English, you will get along with them perfectly. Is it? Good. Now, let us see the last question of the first exercise. If they had gone for a walk, they dash within bracket turn is given the lights off. What is the answer? Here, what is the clue we can get from this sentence? Yes, we can get the clue from the if class part, not from the main class part. From the if class, we can get the clue. What clue do we get from here? Let us see again. If they had gone, which tense is belongs to? Yes, exactly you are right. So, had gone, it is given there, okay, past perfect. So, if we have past perfect in if class, what would be there in the main class? Yes, so would plus have plus v3, that is past participle form of the verb. So, what is the answer? Check your answer now. So, the answer for the sentence is check again. If they had gone for a walk, they would have turned off the lights. Okay, super. So, we completed the first exercise very well. Many exercises are given in your textbook. Kindly go through it and try to find out the answers. We will see you in the next class. See you. Bye-bye.